that the president will talk about the country being safe after 9-11, which will make a big proportion of everyone watching at the same instant say to themselves, yeah, but what about 9-11? Dollars to donuts. He will also remind Americans that the threat against us still exists, and we must use every tool at our disposal to keep America safe, which will make, again, just about everyone watching at the same instant say to themselves, yeah, what about those threats we've been painfully aware of since 9-11 that still exist? What about bin Laden? Well, despite the obvious rejoinders, the we've kept you safe since 9-11 theme and the threats still out there theme will have been two of the three main themes of the Bush-Cheney legacy project by the time it wraps up next week. The third theme is the no matter what you've heard, we didn't torture anyone theme. That one was dramatically interrupted today by this headline on the front page of the Washington Post. Quote, detainee tortured, says U.S. official. The Bush-Cheney uh, We Did Not Torture Legacy Tour has taken a detour, courtesy, courtesy of Susan Crawford, the convening authority for the U.S. military commissions. She decides which cases go to the military commissions and which do not. Today, Crawford revealed to Bob Woodward at the Washington Post that the U.S. cannot prosecute Saudi prisoner Mohammed al Qatani, an alleged 9-11 plotter, because, quote, we tortured Katani. His treatment met the legal definition of torture, and that's why I did not refer the case for prosecution. It was abusive and uncalled for and coercive, clearly coercive. So there it is, in black and white, from a Bush administration official. We tortured. Carefully consider the source here. This is not a disgruntled former administration official. This is not Katani's attorney. This is not a human rights watchdog. Susan Crawford is a retired judge, a lifelong Republican. She served as general counsel for the Army under Reagan. She was Dick Cheney's inspector general when he was secretary of defense. She is the first and last word in the Pentagon when it comes to prisoner charges, trials, and sentencing. And Susan Crawford, current Bush administration official, says Katani endured 48 of 54 consecutive days of 18 to 20 hour interrogations, standing naked in front of a female agent, subject to strip searches, insults to his mother and sister. The treatment was physically harsh enough that he had to be hospitalized twice after his heart rate dropped as low as 35 beats per minute. Ms. Crawford says, quote, the techniques they used were all authorized, but the manner in which they applied them was overly aggressive and too persistent. This was not any one particular act. This was just a combination of things that had a medical impact on him. It was that medical impact that pushed me over the edge. The end result of that treatment, quote, unfortunately, what this has done, I think, has tainted everything going forward. Tainted everything going forward. The case against Mr. Kadani can't be brought. This bell can't be unrung, in other words. Ms. Crawford's account comes just one day after a former Guantanamo prosecutor declared that the evidence being kept against Guantanamo prisoners is so disorganized that fair prosecutions going forward might be impossible. He is now pushing for the release of the prisoner he was supposed to be prosecuting. This is the Bush-Cheney legacy when it comes to fighting terrorism in a sustainable, effective way. Their legacy is not tallying up the capture and prosecution of men like bin Laden or Ayman al-Zawahiri for 9-11. It's wondering whether there will ultimately be prosecutions of Americans, of American officials, of the administration itself, for what they did to America after 9-11. Any activity we conduct is within the law. We do not torture. This government does not torture people. You know, we, 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 we stick to U.S. law and our international obligations. On the question of so-called torture, we don't do torture. We never have. Uh, it's not something that uh, this administration subscribes to. I don't get hurt because we don't torture. We do not torture. We don't torture. It's sort of an awkward position when one of your top officials tells the Washington Post that actually, yeah, you do torture. Asked about today's bombshell from within, the White House press secretary, Dana Perino, added some nuance to legacy tour, we don't torture language. Let me just make sure it's clear, and I'll say it on the record one more time, that it has never been the policy of this president or this administration to torture. Oh, it is now not the policy of the administration to torture. That's like a drunk driver saying, no, Ossifer, you've got it all wrong. It is not my policy to drive drunk. So what do the Obama administration and the Congress do with all of the torturees if their treatment precludes them from being prosecuted in anything other than a kangaroo court? And what does the new government do about all of the alleged torturers, the people who authorized the torture? 
And how does the real fight against real terrorist networks look different in a new administration that pledges not only to close Guantanamo, but not to torture and not to try to do everything with our military anymore? Joining us now is Senator Jim Webb, a member of the Foreign Relations Committee, the Armed Services Committee, and the Veterans Affairs Committee. Senator Webb, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Nice to be with you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll That's see. a hell of a lead-in, uh, Rachel. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the unfortunately, it's the news we woke up to. I have to ask what your reaction is to this uh, news that the official in charge of deciding who goes to trial at Guantanamo says we tortured this guy. Well, uh, obviously, for people who care about uh, our national security, this is a loss if this is an individual who really should have been prosecuted. And, and uh, I think, on the one hand, it shows the fairness of our system that someone can come forward and say that uh, because of those sorts of acts that uh, the, the prosecution uh, wouldn't take place um, and so really the for me having spent years in the military and in the Pentagon and, and uh, uh, having spent time writing also on, on this issue at one point in my life um, it's a very delicate balance and it's true that we do not uh, condone these sorts of uh, techniques as a matter of policy. I think that's, that's a fair thing to, uh, for the White House to have pointed out. And when we can clearly show that uh, the line has been passed, then we, we do something about it because we believe in the integrity of our system. Um, so my, you know, my biggest concern about the prisoners uh, in Guantanamo is the length of time that people have been held without appropriate charges. Um, that is something that I believe goes against the grain of, of our system, and I think that's where we should be focusing our attention. Sheldon Whitehouse, your colleague, uh, the senator from Rhode Island, has talked about um, moving forward on this issue, regardless of whether or not the, the White House is looking at investigating the old White House, the Bush administration, for any role they played on torture as a policy matter. Sheldon Whitehouse has proposed that uh, Congress should should work on that, finding out if this is a uh, this is something that was indeed sort of dictated from the top, and the people who did that at the top of the food chain are the ones who should be held accountable. Do you think that Congress should work on that, regardless of what the Obama administration wants to do? I, I think it's appropriate to examine and whether those sorts of techniques were furthered as a matter of policy because what they do in the end is negatively impact the value of the information that you could obtain. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who were uh, brought into the system after 9-11 who were really bad actors and who uh, needed to uh, have charges brought against them and have uh, punishments put on them that are appropriate to the way that we conduct ourselves as Americans and uh, when you uh, use these kinds of techniques as people even like John McCain have pointed out it taints the value of the information that you receive and, and at the same time we, we, we can't forget that uh, there are people who intended to harm the country who were uh, brought into our system uh, the question is how long you hold them before you bring charges and how you obtain the information that you use against them. Vice President Cheney, um, Senator Webb, did, a, did an interview with Jim Lehrer tonight in which he uh, once again made the case that Saddam Hussein had links to al-Qaeda uh, and that's why the Vice President thinks it was a good idea to invade Iraq after 9-11. Um, the administration is still litigating this while they are on their way out the door. Um, does it matter? Is it, is it worth re rebutting them and fighting with them on this, on this subject? Or um, do, do they get to sort of maintain their own reality on, on that issue? You know, it does matter in this sense that we, we find that there are a significant percentage of, of people in the country who continue to believe that uh, Saddam Hussein was connected to the events of 9-11 and as a result that affects uh, the way that we still look at what we uh, did in Iraq. What we did in Iraq was uh, a, a huge strategic blunder. It took our eye off where we needed to go in terms of international terrorism. We see that now very clearly when uh, the uh, uh, forces of international terrorism have recentered uh, their mass in uh, the mountains between Afghanistan and Pakistan. We have enormous uh, strategic vulnerabilities in Pakistan, as you know, 
uh, and they, inf they affect what we're attempting to do in Afghanistan as well. So uh, I think President Bush has probably been a little more forthcoming on these types of issues of late than Vice President Cheney has. And um, then they ought to just admit that uh, strategically uh, we made an error that we're coming out of now. Uh, and uh, we need to focus our attention on uh, stabilizing that region uh, and uh, examining what we can do, particularly with Pakistan. It's a, it's a very fragile situation in Pakistan in, in many different ways.